Yeah, I'm a penophile. I love pens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just I, I just want to know what inks you're using. Men have pens, women have a notepad. Oh my god. I, okay. I, 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 I'm... <laughs> Some of you have been issued pens. Some of you have been issued notepads. You can't have both. Oafs. Oafs. <laughs> using pen. Inaudible. Oh, Mr. Mr. President, I just, I just hate the Beatles. They're turning, they're turning America's young men into women. Oh, yes, I, I agree. This, uh, this foreign menace has to be stopped. <laughs> oh, I, I never use a pen, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, we're, not, we're not doing Lincoln Elvis. Uh, Link, Lincoln Elvis? No, Nixon what? Elvis. Lincoln Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> we did that in Glue Factory uh, today already. I'm just warming up my muscles. Okay, here we go. Four score and seven years ago, Mom. <laughs> Okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this bonus. It's a Thursday. Yes, bonus. bonus. Uh, epi- what? <laughs> I was doing Elvis saying bonus. <laughs> he was doing Elvis saying bonus. That's right. Uh, welcome to this bonus episode of TF. Mm. It is Riley Milo Hussein. We have November, of course, mm. joining us from an undisclosed location in Glasgow. So I have disclosed the location. Yeah. But why did you disclose my location? <laughs> November is poised with the boffins from Cumbernauld Hill. <laughs> Deep in the bowels of a uh, sort of brutalist Glasgow uh, institution. Yeah, I'm, I'm in an undisclosed location in Glasgow, and I'm about to respond to this podcast at a time and place of my choosing. I don't think that any kind of public-private development in Canary Wharf... Canary Wharf would never make a movie about how someone tried to steal Canary Wharf because it was so good. Mm. That's my argument regarding Cumbernauld Hit. That's true. Yeah. It takes a state to make a movie about your intentional community where someone tries to steal it because it's such a good town that works so well. Uh, but no, no, we are, of course, going to be, as as we mentioned in the previous episode, focusing a little bit more on goings on in the UK today, looking at some of the developments in first the Labour Party, which has now given back or Keir Starmer personally has given back six thousand pounds worth of like arsenal boxes and Taylor Swift tickets that he's received since taking office. And all it cost him was the face value of what he was given. Plus, now having a personal favorability rating less than Rishi Sunak at the end of the previous administration. A masterstroke, sir. The chess master. (laughs) I mean, to be fair, probably a lot of the reason why he has such a low favorability rating is he's, he's shit at his job. Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. I mean, we can't we can't discount that. Look, in fairness, it's not all because of the bribes. A lot of it is because I've done absolutely fuck all since I've been in office. <laughs> yeah. So let's be completely fair here. He is uh, presiding over a government that is promising to do basically nothing about any of the problems that we're facing. Is stuck with the economic program mm. that he inherited from his predecessors, who inherited it from their predecessors, who inherited it from their predecessors. He's telling us that everything is going to get worse and they're going to make it worse. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it, it's government. Government by David Blaine in the box. They're going to suspend Keir Starmer above the River Thames well, and he's just going to be in there. He can't do anything. There's no levers in there. There's no buttons. Well, this is something, November, you mentioned to me earlier, which is like, at what point do we think like there's a bit of a kinds of kindness going I, on between Keir Starmer and the donors? It's weirder if they're not mm. fucking, right? Like, to stay in a guy's house, to like lie about staying in a guy's house, he's buying your clothes, he's buying your glasses. Like, I want to stop referencing this film, I want to get off Mr. Lanthimos's wild ride, but I can't because it keeps happening, and more and more ministers are just like, yeah, I, I just like sleep in a big bed with Lord Ali <laughs> and and like yeah. his partner, and it's not weird actually because like this is this is normal. When I was a young barrister, just to cover my costs of the tuition and the professional qualifications, I signed up at SugarBabies.com. <laughs> <laughs> I am master following on Feet Finder. And other websites like Panty Dealer. I was doing anything to put myself through the bar school. <laughs> and of course, there I developed a relationship with Lord Ali. It's completely above board. It was declared. He would take me out to Carluccio's once a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, blast from the past. I'd huh? have a Milanese. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, other than just like Lord Ali putting Starmer in a vacuum while showing him YouGov polls of his own tanking popularity, I cannot understand what is going on here beyond just quite simply the whole ideology of new laborism 
or you know, for for quite some time, has been just getting in the Chuck E. Cheese money blower machine mm. and just grabbing as much as you can. But again, because it's Britain, no one's offering you altogether that no. much. It's more about the experience, you know. There are some things mm. money can't buy, or some things other <laughs> people's money can buy. You turn up at the hospitality box at Arsenal, and it's the vacuum. <laughs> 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 oh, you can watch the Arsenal, Mister Starmer, <laughs> from pride of place. <laughs> Peter, Peter Mandelson has been like really working on like deepening his voice. Mm. Yeah, you're next to Mikel Arteta on the touchline, but you can't see anything because you are in the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deal. You can just absorb sound through the mouth tube. We've determined a way for me to attend the football safely without conferring an unfair advantage on me versus other fans. I will be entering the vacuum <laughs> and I'll be lowered onto the touchline with my head entirely concealed by the vacuum. I'll be breathing through a <laughs> straw. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, I know I know sometimes we do Starmer voice too much, but it's it's fun to imagine him in in, in different well, he is, uh, predicaments and locations. He is also the prime minister mm. is the other thing. Yes, and something which I true. keep forgetting. Like anytime he, like most recently for instance when he was uh, he did the photo op where he was on the phone to Netanyahu. I was like, why the fuck is is this guy on the phone? And then I remembered that he had been elected prime minister of the country that I live in. Oh yeah. Guys, remember me. I was <laughs> never in a vacuum. They don't make one small enough. If you put me in the regular size vacuum, they'd never find me again. It would crush my bones to dust like the Titan submarine implosion. Oh, I remember him. Eventually yeah. we're all going to have to talk to Netanyahu, right? Oh, yeah. And just like, offer our condolences whenever like a rocket is intercepted yeah, this is by the, the This Iron is the Dome. thing that, that mm. kind of falls forward, right? We've gone from like, <laughs> do you condemn Hamas to you must condemn Hamas to you must mm. support Israel's right to defend itself, herself, excuse me, and now it's going to be, <laughs> you must call Benjamin Netanyahu on the phone and say uh, that you're sorry for not personally doing enough to protect Israel. How long until someone does get berated for like misgendering Israel? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I guess. Christ, <laughs> it's so weird. They, them, Israel. Everything yeah. about Stam is, is she so, her. so weird. But one of the weirder things about him, besides the billionaire kind of kindness thing, is the she, her pronouns for Israel. He only does it for yeah. Israel. And and like he's gone to Israel and he's seen that there is no penis there. I mean, I, uh, I, I guess, mm -hmm. I guess so. Well, they're going to talk a little bit more about Israel Iran probably next episode. Yeah, because things keep happening. Well, indeed, yes. The last item on this before we sort of go into a little bit of news from across the pond, or more specifically across the pond and then across the landmass to the west coast of the country, <laughs> is of course that. Thank you. You're just really I, I love documenting a lot of locations this evening. Aren't <laughs> yeah, you? that's me. I am. Is of course other members of the cabinet are being told you don't have to give back the freebies that you were given only i'm doing that so now every he's basically set up a position where i'm just going to review it for you in exchange for nothing he has seemed like an uh, like an unprincipled weasel who can't be trusted to do what he said to like you know make government less sleazy mm -hmm. He's also doing a lot of other unpopular stuff, right? So let's not over-egg this. But in exchange for nothing, he is now doing that. He's still, like all of those people that, that bought that bought all that stuff for him, he still owes them favors. Mm. He had to repay all of it. He still owes them favors. Uh, his popularity is tanking. And now every other min labor minister who he needs to keep loyal and on his side, he's basically telling to personally pay thousands of pounds that they weren't expecting to pay in order to also not look like unprincipled weasel. Okay, and, and these That's are all the situation. Who I assume are not given to backstabbing, right? Because otherwise that could be a <laughs> yeah. real problem for him. Yeah. Because the thing is, right, like having that kind of middleman stratum in British politics allows for a greater mm. amount of intimacy, right? Like Joe Biden's never going to know what it's like to depend on like a Russian oligarch to get tickets to something. He's never going to have that kind of man to man intimacy. And I think that's very sad. Yeah, Joe Biden's never going to be whipped on his ass with birch twigs. Mm. But in, in Britain, it's such a beautiful place because you can be the prime minister and also have like a very likely chance of like being hounded by a bunch of drunk lads who have just been on a night out who will just like call you fucking legend mm. Mm. or something. They might like. grab you and go way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when the chief scientific advisor during COVID oh, I do. was just gotten at the hands of, and like lightly traumatized at the hands of lads? Yeah, but of an estate agent called Jonathan Chu. And that's not Chu in a Chinese way, that's Chu like the verb to this Chu. This would not happen in a serious country, I feel. No, no one is grabbing the Surgeon General and going like, way. But in this country. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I want to move on. I want to move All on. Right. 
So last week, Mark Zuckerberg, who is demonstrating unusual look after unusual look. Mm. Yeah, he's got a, a t-shirt on with um, out Zuck, out Nahum, Nahum. Uh, fuck it, I can't pronounce Latin or indeed anything today. I think I'm having a stroke. Anyway, he's got like a t-shirt with Latin on it. He's got the fucking uh, like imperial haircut. He's getting mm. really like uh, like sort of Augustus spectrum disorder. It's like really something. 